So we've seen that the CH in German is soft when there is an I or an E sound before. So like in ich, dich, nicht. But when we have another vowel sound before, like in suchen, machen, we get a hard CH. So in the real world, syllables exist rather than individual sounds, individual phonemes, which is why, as far as we know, an alphabet was only invented once in all of human history, because it was quite an unnatural way to think about sounds. There was natural ways to think about syllables, ku, ka, ki, su, sa, si, rather than dividing up the k and the u. So we see that here in German as well, what is more important is the syllable to understand the sound. So when we have an E or an I sound before CH, we get soft CH, ich, ech. And when we have another vowel, we get a hard CH, like in suchen, machen. So we saw that the English K can become the German CH. To break is spelled B-R-E-C-H-E-N. So how would you pronounce that? Brechen. Brechen. So here we have an E before the CH. It's giving us a soft CH. Brechen. Brechen. Good. To speak is sprechen. That's S-P-R-E-C-H-E-N. Sprechen. Again, a soft CH. Sprechen. Much better. Sprechen. How would you say, do you speak German talking formally? The word for German is Deutsch. Deutsch. Do you speak German? Sprechen Sie Deutsch? Deutsch is spelled D-E-U-T-S-C-H. So E-U in German gives us OI. It gives us this OI sound. If you hear people talking about the Euro, they will talk about the Euro in German. Euro. E-U gives us OI. And this T-S-C-H all together just gives us CH. Deutsch. Deutsch. Which... Interestingly, sounds a lot like the word Dutch in English, no? And there is a reason for this, of course. The English word for Dutch, which is of course the same as the German word for German, used to refer to continental German peoples generally, no? They were referred to as the Dutch. Then the sense narrowed later to the Netherlands in around the 17th century. There's a lot of slang in English that refers to negative things as Dutch. Even the idea of splitting the bill on a date, which you might think of something more positive, was considered quite a negative thing in English culture. And this is called to go Dutch. And they put the Dutch there and that kind of made it like something undesirable. So in English, when we refer to people from the Netherlands, we use the German word for German when we call them Dutch. How would you say, can we speak German? So how would you say that? Can we speak German? Können wir sprechen Deutsch? It's a little bit lost, no? Deutsch outside of the... Um, können wir Deutsch sprechen? Very good. Können wir Deutsch sprechen? Riechen in German means to smell. Now, you might be familiar with the English word to reek. No? To reek means to really smell, to stink, to smell bad, or, or to have a really potent smell. Oh, it reeks of soup, for example. Now, English is a language that takes lots of different words from different languages and holds on to them all. English holds on to a great amount of vocabulary that it comes across. Now, what English does to hold on to so much vocabulary is to give all of the vocabulary a slightly different register, a slightly different feeling. Otherwise, there's no real reason to hold on to it. There are not really any two true synonyms. You don't really get two words with exactly the same meaning. Otherwise, one of them falls out of use. There's no reason to hold on to them. So, riechen, just a normal verb for to smell in German, exists. In English, but it has a slightly different connotation to reek, to like really smell. But in German, that's just a normal verb for to smell, riechen. So if you wanted to say, I smell it. Ich riech's. Ich riech's. Or ich rieche es. Ich riech's. Ich rieche es. If you wanted to say to reek or to stink in German, you would use to stink. Stinken. <laughs> Stinken. So this is something we want to bear in mind, that we can share words with German and English, but the register 
or the meaning or the connotation might change quite drastically. So we want to watch out for that. We don't want to just take on a lot of similar sounding vocabulary without keeping our ears attentive to how it might be used differently. Another example would be the word for dog. The word for dog in German is Hund. 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 It's spelled H-U-N-D. So in English we have the word hound, which we can use to refer to a dog maybe in a derogative kind of way or maybe in a less personal kind of way. Or even there are some breeds of dog that contain hound, like greyhound, for example. So in English our everyday word is dog. And then hound has a slightly different connotation. But in German, the everyday word for dog is hund, hound. We also see the O-U to U pattern. Hound is spelled H-O-U-N-D and hund, H-U-N-D. To know in German is wissen, wissen. Wissen. It's spelled W-I-S-S-E-N, wissen. Wissen. Like wise, like the word wise in English. How would you say, do you know where my dog is? Speaking formally. Firstly, what was the word for where? Very short word. Wo. Wo. So, speaking formally, do you know where my dog is? Wissen Sie, wo mein Hund ist? Good. Wissen Sie, wo mein Hund ist? And here the order is exactly the same as in English, no? Do you know? Wissen Sie, where, wo my dog is? Mein Hund ist. I know, I know, is ich weiß. Ich weiß. Ich weiß. Ich weiß. So, this is irregular. Wissen, ich weiß. How would you say, I know it? Ich weiß es. Ich weiß es. I don't know it. Ich weiß es nicht. Good. Ich weiß es nicht. I don't know where... Your house is. I don't know. That's the first bit. Ich weiß nicht. Where your house is. And we are speaking informally. Wo dein... Good. Dein Haus ist. Good. Ich weiß nicht, wo dein Haus ist. I don't know where your house is. Good. So as we saw with can and kannst and will and willst and muss and must, well, we have an irregular version for the I form. We saw that that irregularity tends to carry over to do. That's why we have can and kannst from können and will and willst from wollen. So, ich weiß and du weißt. Weißt. Du weißt. Do you know where my dog is? Weißt du, wo... Mein Hund ist. Very good. Weißt du, wo mein Hund ist? 